I hear the voice of one cry I hear the voice of one cry But it's Mother's Day, isn't it? We celebrate mothers today and women in general uh, and our God. I believe, I'm not uh, trying to be a fortune teller because people would uh, point at me and say that I've been operating in witchcraft or something. Just saying. But what I am going to say is I believe that the governor is going to lighten up a little bit and we're going to be able to come back as a church. And if we do, and if that comes up to pass this coming week, we're going to open up, and I believe it probably will happen on Tuesday and, or Thursday, but if we open up, I want the people that are there in their living rooms watching and got comfortable in their living rooms, and by all God's grace, I, I appreciate you tuning in. But if you have to come with rubber gloves on and a mask, then you got to come that way. It's time to come out of your homes. Whenever the governor does what he does, it's time to come out of your homes. And if you don't want to hug, you don't have to hug. If you don't want to shake hands, you don't have to shake hands. But one thing I want you to do is say, it is good to go to the house of the Lord. For in his presence is fullness of joy. Ooh, and treasures forevermore. It is time for us to shake it off, guys, and come on into the house of God. Can I get an amen, guys? It is time to rejoice before our God. Yes, come on now. Uh, I think, you know, it's easy to get used to, you know, not getting up and going. Because it takes an effort sometimes to go to the house of God. And some of us more than others. But I tell you what, it's worth it every time. Every time I leave and the Lord has blessed me, talked to me, counseled me one way or another. I may have went in and said, Lord, I need this. And I left and he didn't do exactly that, but he gave me exactly what I really needed. And I went and I had sustenance to my soul. And I was able to walk out that week and have strength and look unto my God. Because not only am I seeking him alone, but I, he came and visited us in a church setting. Oh, he comes and he blesses us, doesn't he? Oh, come on, guys. Can't you get it any better than that? He comes and visits with us. There's something about a corporate anointing. Ooh, there's a corporate anointing that comes whenever people come together and start worshiping together. We have it at home. We can get together and we can, you know, praise God in our prayer room. And I've really, uh, the Lord's ministered to me greatly at home. In ways he couldn't do it, you know, in public. But whenever I get together with my brothers and sisters, there's a power of coming together in unity. Woo! The devil may come in one way, but God will chase him away in seven ways. Oh, I tell you what, God is good. When we come together, let us come together in unity. In the name of Jesus. Ah, praise God. Amen. You got to come and experience it, don't you, brother? Yeah, that's what Ron Carpenter used to say. He said, you, I can't tell you what it's like. You got to come. So that's what I did. I went. And you know, I went to a, a, a prayer service. One time I went, and it was to a prayer service on a Wednesday night. And 3,000 people showed up. And I was like, woohoo! <laughs> I was like, this is what it's all about here on Wednesday night. You know, in this place or that place I was in at that time. 3,000 folk got together and started asking God to bless the church and whatever. Ah, oh, man, I tell you what. Ron Carpenter opened that church in a garage with two people and a, and a worship leader. And uh, I tell you what, I know the worship leader personally. And I've always really liked him, you know. It's just uh, a very beautiful thing. Then they went up to about 9,000 people. And God blessed that, you know. And... Now he's over in the West Coast. Just because, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Because you cannot, if you despise days of small beginnings, you will never be able to walk into what God has for you. Because usually it's not a big old splash. Usually it's a walking into it. And you walk into it little by little, faithfulness after faithfulness, and you walk into it and little by little it grows. And I tell you what, it can grow around you and be just magnificent in God. But regardless of what it comes out to be, it will be fruitful in the name of Jesus. So do not despise the day of small beginnings, brother. Amen. See, man, we need to hear that, don't we? 
People, you know, sometimes, you know, we've went up and down in this church. We've had people and then some people left and other people came and some people left. And they get all worried about it, you know. And sometimes I have too. I've looked at it and said, God, help us, Lord. But one thing we cannot do is base what God's going to do on who comes and goes. You just can't. If you say, oh, God's done wrapped up because such and such left the church, that's not true. Because now you got your eyes on man and not on God. I promise you, Ron Carpenter, when he started that church down there, uh, World Redemption Outreach in Greenville, South Carolina, I guarantee you people came and people left. But I tell you what, more people came than they left. And when that happens, the place fills up. So don't worry about somebody if they left. Don't, we don't even talk about it. Or you may go hug them and stuff and love on them. But don't worry so much about it, guys. God is in this. As long as God's in the boat, we're going to be all right. And that's a fact. I remember over there in New Life in Roanoke, they used to say this. They say, you know, church is like a bus. Some people get on and they ride for a while and then they get off at their stop. But you're always praying more people get on than get off. <laughs> so if somebody gets off, you're just saying, well, that's their stop. God bless them. But I tell you what, man, as God is with us, we will be all right. I was at New Life in Roanoke, and I seen that place. When I went on staff, there was about 500 people there. And it went up to about 1,000 in a couple of years. So I've seen churches grow, guys. I've seen it to where you couldn't even hardly. You had to look around and say, well, are we going to take down a wall, or what are we going to do? And then we went to two services, and then we went to three services. I've seen it. And I've been around it. And I believe whenever you couple with people in that type of ministry, that kind of anointing that is on them comes on you. And that kind of blessing that's on them can come on you as well. I wasn't there to learn and not grow in that kind of aspect. I know that God has us to grow. God has it for us to be blessed coming in and going out. We will be blessed, guys. We will be blessed. And if we have stony ground, well, we'll pick up the rocks and throw them in the ditch. And then we'll plant a crop and we'll see God bless it. One way or another, we got to do what we got to do, and he will do what he does. Woo if we got to pick up some rocks, let's pick up some rocks. Sometimes you can't plant till you get rid of the rocks. So if we got some rocks, that mean they got to go. I ain't calling nobody no rockhead or nothing. Anyway, praise God. Let's get back to the, that was, just a, that was just a God moment there. That was a man a moment. <laughs> Amen. You know, my wife uh, has taken a second job. Uh, Teresa has. And she's working at Our Lady of the Valley. And what she did, she picked up extra hours. So she's working on the weekend. She's working about 30 hours on the weekend. Plus her regular job. That's crazy. But during the coronavirus and our shutdown, I came off payroll at this church. Haven't, you know, I took nothing out of the payroll. Carol Galvin was right there with me. We were filling out papers and whatever. And then during that time, my wife says, I'm going to go get more income coming in. So for now, she's not going to be here on Sunday mornings. But she will be here on Wednesday nights. It's just the way it is for this season. But she will be back and she is praying for us. She loves this church. My family loves this church. She has put her sweat into this and her prayers into this place. So don't you worry. You just pray for us to have wisdom and the guidance of God and we'll come through this in the name of Jesus. And talking about my wife, she is a mother. Our daughter Mandy, she's, she's a handful and I appreciate my daughter in so many ways. But I tell you what. Uh, I found some things, you know, when I see, I celebrate my Mother's Day with my wife as well. Because she is a mother. Amen? And we need to celebrate that. Not only my natural mother that has went on to be of Jesus, but with my wife. And one thing I found out not to buy her on, on Mother's Day. There's a few things I found out not to buy her. Do not buy a woman anything that involves sizes. Because one in 7,000 times, man, you're going to be wrong. You know, about 6,999 times you're going to be wrong. And they're going to say, what do you think I am? You think I'm that big? <laughs> or if you get it too small, they're going to say, man, I haven't wore that since I was in 12th grade. What are you trying to remind me of? So I'm letting you know, don't buy that. 
Don't buy a gym membership. Or anything involves weight loss, anything like that. Especially after this corona thing, man. Because they're going to look at you and say, what are you trying to say? Oh, there's going to be a fight here today. <laughs> I'm telling you not to buy that. Don't buy it for your mama, don't buy it for your wife. <laughs> and please don't go down to the store, you know, down to Victoria's Secrets or something, go try to buy something. Because you're going to be wrong. You may have in your mind what you think, but it ain't going to happen. Don't buy your wife. Don't buy, don't buy nobody. No, no. It just ain't going to happen. Just leave it alone. Don't go there. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> just saying. And finally, don't go out and spend too much. Oh, look what I got. I got her something really nice. She's going to look at you and say, <laughs> how are we going to pay for that? <laughs> How much did that cost? And if you buy something really little or something, you know, it didn't cost much, they're going to look at you and say, don't you think I was worth more than that right there? So either way, you can't win. Come on now. Can I get an amen, fellas? The best thing to do before God and man and before our mamas is get a gift certificate. <laughs> Can I, that's true, isn't it? Our mothers do many things. See, I have three brothers and a sister. My sister's here, back over on there. Hey, Jeannie, how you doing? Good, hey, man. It's good to see you. And uh, my niece right back there, Summer. But see, mothers do things that nobody else wants to do. They're willing to get, they're willing to get peed on, pooped on, and vomited on. And I tell you what, man, when one of us brothers got sick, all of us got sick. I don't know how that happened. I guess we was just all over each other. And here I, one of them was throwing up and then the rest of us started throwing up. And here's my mom in the middle of it. And I never heard her get angry. She just did it. And it's kind of like a pastor. It's like, kind of like a pastor. We're willing to get peed on, pooped on, and, and vomited on as well, spiritually speaking. So I guess good pastors got good love about them too. Because I've been around some good pastors and they just go with it and kind of smile and... Some of them are more fiery than others, but most of them just kind of keep on going. Oh, come on, can I get an amen? Yeah. Mothers are always offering their love. Some mothers can be better than others, but I tell you what, to have a godly mother that will pray for you. It's not that they're perfect, it's that they just are steadfast in what they do. They're steadfast. I watch my wife and she's just steadfast around the house cleaning and doing all kinds of things. I know she's got to be tired because she tells me. <laughs> Can I get an amen, fellas? <laughs> but the thing of it is, is mother's love is always patient. Even whenever they feel like they've got the correct, you know, a mother's love. Has, my mother's always was very patient with me and always seemed the best. She was behind me. Whenever I had a dream and I said, Mom, I want to go to Bible college. She was behind that. She had faith to see into the future. She, had, she just said, I believe that you are called of God. And I'm going to stand behind that right there. See, a mother's love, they, they, just, don't, they, they just keep going with you. And they're forgiving and forsaking themselves. You know, they, they just don't, that kind of love just never fails. It believes, when, uh, it believes in a person when all the world around you can condemn you. Have you ever been in a place where people around you were saying things about you and your mama stood up behind you and said, mm, it's on today. I will deal with you when you get home. You're going to get a butt whipping. But I will deal with all these people out here right now. And they will get up and they say, it's one thing for me to correct my child, but you will not do that. I tell you what, man, it's, it's something to have a mother around you and watch out for you. Today we need to celebrate that because I don't know any other love other than God's love like a mama's love. And that's the way it's been in my life. My mother had her ups and downs, but it was steadfast and she loved the Lord. See, in 1 Corinthians 13.7 it says this, Love bears all things, believes all things. Hopes all things and endures all things. That right there is a mom's love. And it matches right up with the scripture. So if you ever want to know if your mother 
was brought to you by God. I promise you she was. That his God, that's God's substitute kind of in your life with your mom. Even though sometimes my mother, it could be like a glove that was a, a glove that fit me and loved on me. And sometimes it seemed like a, a rag that scrubbed me. You know, her love could get me very irritated. At the same time, her confidence could get me very uh, situated. It's something about a mother's love. Yeah, they're human as well. They're human, but they believe. Don't they get behind you and believe? How many of you in here have experienced a mother's love? How many of you out there have experienced a mother's love? You know, sometimes we feel like we hate them, and we really don't because whenever they ain't there and you start missing them, I tell you what, you find out how deeply you really love them. Oh, you may say, well, oh, well man, that got on my last nerve. Well, I promise you, one day when they're not there, you'll regret that. And you'll say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for doing that. So if your mother's alive today, go hug her and love on her and make peace with her. Because that's going to be, yeah, I'll tell you what, one day you'll look back and wish that you did if you don't. It's always best to have, leave things on a good note, isn't it? You see, I remember my mother's love the most, man. I'd go and I see, I was a, I just, man, I was rough. And I know I've told stories about how rough I was. Man, I was like, you know, I was like sandpaper rough. And my sister should say, Amen, he was. Because I was around two older brothers and I was the younger of the brothers, I had to be rough. And the thing of it is, is whenever I wrecked or fell out of a tree or, or did st stub my toe, you know, back in the day when I stubbed my toe, half my toe was gone. <laughs> It ain't like this little stuff anymore right here. Like, oh, oh, I just stubbed my toe. Man, I didn't have no toe. <laughs> but I'd go home and my mother would love on me. And she'd wrap it up. And she'd put, clean that wound that I have. Nobody could clean a wound and do it such painlessly as my mother could. To me anyway. I would trust her in areas around me that nobody else could get to. Because I knew that she would always do it for kind loving hands oh come on guys see mothers got a hold of broken pieces in our life don't you think there's been times in our life where our mom seen that we were broken and down and hurting and a mother's love came in there and just said i'm going to stand right beside you and we're going to get back up on our feet and we're going to go on down this road don't let this get you down right now this too shall pass that was one of my mother's favorite sayings this too shall pass even though it may have been dark at the time, she would come and she said, Tim, now don't get down. This too shall pass. You know, she had wisdom that I didn't have. She mended up me when I was broken. Just like my God mends up that which is broken. See, God is the one that mends us up that is broken, don't we? Even though some of us don't have our mothers anymore, we don't run to mother, but we run to our God. Because that same love that was in our mother, we will find in our God. The same love that we used to yearn for. Mom, I need to come home. I need to come home. I remember in college, I wanted to go home on breaks and stuff because I missed it. I was like a thirst that I had in me that only my mother could quench that. Have you ever been there where you really just had, you was almost lovesick, you know, and you wanted to go get that quenched? And I'd go home and my mother would be there and we'd eat and she'd fry up some potatoes or whatever and we'd chow down. And, and, but you know, before I left, I felt like I had been at home. See, our God is like that. You will find that same type of love in Him. He will always stand behind you. He's like, I will take care of the enemy. Now, if we go home now, we're going back. You may get some correction, but I will take care of the enemy. Today, I may get on my child, but you are not going to get on my child. God will stand up for his children. God stands up for his children. He isn't going to let just anybody just run right over his children. He's just not going to do it. God stands up for his children just like a mama would. That same love that was in that mother is in our God, but it's magnified in our God. Our God loves us so much more than what our mothers could. He mends that which is broken. He mends that which is broken. How many of us have been broken in here? And went to our God and found that same love in Him. And He says, I will heal your brokenheartedness. 
I don't reject the broken places in your life. I see where you have been broken. I see where you have been cast down and you have fallen down and you have broken something in your life. He says, I come to mend that and to set you free from that. Oh, we get all messed up about our broken places. Some of us, man, we go to counseling for years and years and years about our broken places. And God says, I see your broken places. Guess what? He says, I got them too. Uh, you got scars? He said, I got scars. I can identify with pain. I can identify with being rejected. I can, re I can identify with dark days. I can identify with that. And I can bring beauty out of ashes. He is the God that brings beauty out of ashes, guys. And he brings a church out of the corona you, uh, quarantine too, you know what I mean? All that had happened, you know, God will use it for good. There's a song that came out a few years ago. And it talks about God in broken places in people's lives. It's called Broken Vessels. And it was done by Hillsong. You see, broken vessels are actually more beautiful in God's eyes than that which is whole. Because the people that are broken and been mended by God, you see that grace in their life. And you see an understanding. Those who have been forgiven much, loveth much. And they will lay down themselves before their God and they will praise like nobody else can praise. Because they have been broken and God came and mended that. It is something where somebody says, well, I've never been tried. I've never had to go out and do that. I've never had to be restored. I've never had to receive that type of love. Most of that time, you know, you can look at it. It could be a beautiful vessel. But you don't see as much of God in it. Because that which is broken and mended is so much more beautiful in God's eyes. Because that's what He does. That's who He is. So if you've got broken places in your life, allow God to touch those places and you will come out so much more beautiful. For he is there and he is, that's what he does. How many of you have been mended by God in your bloke, broken places? Now this right here is a, a song, it's called Broken Vessels. All these pre pieces broken and shattered in mercy gathered and mended and whole. Empty handed but not forsaken. I've been set free. I have been set free. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I was once lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see it now. Oh, I can see the love in your eyes. Laying yourself down, raising up the broken to life. You take our failure. You take our weakness. You set your treasure in jars of clay. Thank you, Jesus. So takes this heart, Lord. So take this heart, Lord, I'll be your vessel, the world to see your life in me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. See, the Lord, he comes and he binds up the broken vessels. And not only does he do that, he pours in his love and his spirit into that which was broken. See, God, he's looking at people that don't need broke, being broken, but that have already been broken. He wants to set us free. He wants, to, he wants us to know who we are in Him. He wants us to be mended up in Him. You see, man, some people can only come to God whenever they're strong, and they run from Him whenever they're weak. But us that have been broken know that he is our, He's our all in all, regardless if we're broken or if we're going through things in our life, if we've been through things in our life, if we've been struggling in our life. He's the one that has healed us before and He will heal us again. Woo, man, if we're broken again, and if we've fallen down and we have been shattered, the Lord is the one that mends. The one, Lord is the one that sets us free. The Lord is the one that puts His Spirit in us. Just like a mother's love, we're celebrating mothers today. Our mother would pick us up and bandage us up so we could heal. How many times do I look upon myself and I have scars to this day where my mother bandaged me up and took care of me like nobody else. Our God does that and much more. I would not run away from my mother, although maybe in my teenage years or when I was going to get a whipping, I would have ran away for about five minutes, but I knew to go back real quick. Because it'd be worse. Just the same way, that love. We should not run away from our God. 
because he has our best in his heart. He will always heal us up, mend us up, and set us back where we need to be. And we won't be a leaky vessel. We'll be a vessel filled with him. I'm going to finish these lyrics right here on this song. I just, this song just really uh, just spoke to me. Talking about Jesus, it says, Laying yourself down, raising up the broken to life. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was once lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, and now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet that sound that saved a wretch like me. Ooh, Lord God, you laid yourself down to set me free. In the name of Jesus, see, the Lord is good, isn't he? Thank you, Jesus, for being one that, that heals the broken, Lord. That we don't have to run, Father God, when we fall down. Like you are going to judge people, Lord, because they, they stumbled around, Father. You are a God of grace, Father. You are a God of restoration and forgiveness, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you know everybody, it says in the Bible, everybody has sinned and come short of the glory of God. And he says, you know, he came to us and he loved us before we were his own. So if we were once sinners and we were outcast before the Lord, and he loved us and laid his life down for us, and we came to him and said, Lord, forgive me. And he says, come to me. And I, you are forgiven. Stand up and be healed. And have a vision for your life. Come follow me. I have a vision for you. And I am restoring your sight, Tim. I'm restoring your sight, Jack. I'm restoring your sight. I'm restoring your sight, Dwayne. Uh, Shelby. I'm restoring your sight so you can have vision of where you are supposed to go in life. BJ, I'm restoring your life, your eyes, so you can have vision. See, God wants us to have vision as we walk with him. He pours that stuff into us. He says, come and follow me. So why do we run whenever we have a hard day? If we go and we get mad and we say, I can't go to church because I'm mad and I'm having a hard time. Man, we were having a real hard time before we knew him. And some people go into depression and they won't come to church for a long time. And you're saying, why do you do that? He knows already. He knows already. He knows us staying in and out, doesn't he? He does. See, God is good. There is a Japanese art. Kintsuki is the, the, how you say the word. And it's a Japanese art. And what they, what, what they do is they take broken pottery and they put it back together. And when they put it back together, this right here is this type of pottery. Kintsuki. And what it is is they take it back together and they mold it back together with gold and precious metal. So that which is broken is actually amended by the master is more valuable than the original piece. So now the pieces like this are sought after and people will order them and want to have them on their shelf where they wouldn't want to have just a normal piece. And that's exactly the way we are in Christ. We become more valuable when the master has put his hand upon us and mended us up. And you see his glory coming through the cracks. He's the one that fills in the cracks. He's the one that mended us up. Now we are more valuable than the original piece. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That came and saved a wretch like me. Ooh, I was once lost, but now I am found. Oh Lord God, that is grace. Sure is be, can it? So right there, in all those broken places. And broken pieces. His glory is coming out, isn't it, in all those gold areas? Isn't that the way God is in us? He said, I restore you, but I'm not trying to take away all your scars. They're testimony unto my grace. They're testimony unto who I am and what I do. Although you are broken, you have been broken, now you are made whole, but I feel the cracks. It's not that you are perfect. My grace abounds in that. So whenever Jesus sees us, and he looks on us, and people can see it as well. Have you ever seen somebody, and you just say, Whew, amazing grace, Lord. It ain't about religion, that right there, man. I tell you, I've been around some grandmothers and beautiful women of God, and some of them are in this room, that where you're just like, oh, Lord. That right there is relationship. 
And it's oozing out all out of them, Lord. I could see it coming through the cracks of where they were broken, Lord God. Where they broke themselves for prayer for their children or whatever it may be. They broke themselves before you, Lord. And there you are, Lord God, in those cracks. I see your glory seeping out of those vessels, Lord. Oh, God is good. We don't need to hide our cracks. For he shows his glory in that right there. He said, my power is made perfect in your weakness. Ooh, come on. And Paul says, I'll, I'll, uh, he says, if I will go and I'll, I'll tell it more about my weakness that his grace and his power may be upon me. I won't boast in my strengths because then the guy, how can I boast in his power? Because that's my strength. But if I boast in my weaknesses, then his power may rest upon me. Many of us don't know about that or we haven't really looked into it because we on Sundays, we try to come, don't we? Like we have never been broken. And do we need to look hard to see God's glory in the house? I feel like, you know, we need to be open and say, listen, here am I. And here's his glory because I have been a broken vessel in my life. And we need to be honest about our testimonies and where we're coming and where we're going. And his goodness that restored our sight and forgave us our sin and mended us up and made us whole again. Oh, can I get an amen in here today, guys? That's what God is and that's what he does. Oh man, I don't care. You find out people from all kinds of backgrounds. God uses them and pours in His glory. And you know, I tell you what, man, that is beautiful. It doesn't matter how broken it was. What it matters is, has the master's put his hand on it? Has that person allowed God to put his hand on it? Oh, Father, we thank you, Father, that, you're, that you, Lord God, mend us, Father, and you bring us back together. Let me just read a, a phrase of that song again. Uh, just a little bit here, and it says, All these pieces broken and shattered, in mercy gathered, mended and whole. See, all those pieces, you know, right there on that one right there, it fell on the ground. And people looked at it and said, Ruined. That is ruined. It has no purpose any longer. It could have been a fine piece. It could have held oil. It could, have, it could have been in somebody's kitchen and somebody could have needed flour in it or whatever it was. But it is ruined now because it has fallen and broken on the floor. But the master comes and he says, I will mend that and it will be worth more than what it was in the beginning. And you will find a beauty in it. And the beauty is in the brokenness of it all. See, that's who we are. And that's what he does. He heals the broken. He heals us. Just like a mama would. She used to bandage us up. Now our God does it. Do not run from God. Allow Him to get a hold of our broken pieces. Let us get a hold. Oh Lord God, help us Father. That You Lord will mend us up. We came to Him broken. We came to Him broken. We came to Him broken before. And let us go to Him today. Whatever we're fighting with. Allow Him to heal us up again. Oh, I thank You, Jesus, for that, Lord. We can't allow our brokenness and the things of our life to where we have done things in our life to hold us back from His purposes. <clears throat> Come to Him. He makes it new. He looked at Mary. You remember Mary, the mother? And, uh, and what was that? On the Passion of Christ. And uh, we just played it just the other week, you know, a, a clip from that. And the mother came when Jesus fell on the ground. And, and, and the mother was over him and just crying over her son, Jesus. Mary was. And he looked at her. He says, I make all things new. Certainly she didn't understand it all at that time. But I'm promising you today, he takes the broken and makes all things new. He makes us new when we're broken at. Ooh, come on. That's amazing grace. That's amazing grace. He makes all things new. Ooh, Lord God, we thank you for that, Father. Lord, help us, Father, Father, to take off our mask. The things, Lord, that we have put on just to be accepted around and allow people to see where we have been broken. That, Lord, we can get to know one another and not reject one another. Because we see broken as people. But we see your glory in those places, Father. Your grace and your mercy. Lord God, we thank you for that. 
in the name of Jesus. Now in closing, in closing, let's stand together here. And, and people at home, I want you to just come to the Lord in prayer. And, and think about the broken places in your home and in your life and in relationships in your life. You say, I've been broken in relationship with my children or with my grandmothers or whatever. My family has been jagged. It's jagged in those areas and it seems to be broken. Bring those broken places to the Father for He knows how to get the glory in that. And He will mend that thing back together and you will see Jesus all in it. It is a testimony unto our God. That which is broken, He wants to heal. He wants to heal us and make all things new. So let's come together in prayer today before our God that He may go and He may heal every area of our life. He does not just want a little piece of the bowl and mend it up and just have a little bit, you know, of His glory showing out. He wants the whole vessel. We don't want to hold back anything from Him. He wants to take the whole vessel, all of who we are, and make it new. And the glory of God be in all of it. Not just a part of it, but all of it. Sometimes we get halfway healed up and we hold it back from our God. And we say, Lord God, I'm good enough. I see enough, Lord God, of you in me. And people say they see you in me, Lord. But the Lord says, I want it all. I want to use you. But i got to have all of you. i got to have all of you. If this is speaking to your life today, I want you to just, I won't, I won't spit on you and I won't lay my hands on you, but you can come and stand right here. And we'll just, uh, we will pray for you. If, you. if this is speaking to your life and you're saying, Lord, I've got brokenness, Lord. But I've been holding it back, Lord. It's been holding me back from my call. It's been holding me back, Lord God, in my life. I need that mending, Lord God. I want to see your glory in those places, Lord God, to where I have seen pain and brokenness, Lord. I want to see that mended together, Father, in relation. In my voice.